gentlemen of the Noble TKO podcast, I have a question I'd like to pose to you both. What what even is a fighting game? I don't even know the answer to this. Call do, of Duty. do you have an answer, Matt? Call yes. of Duty. Anything with life bars is a fighting game, right? Uh, Uno. Uno is a fighting game. Absolutely, right? Mm -hmm. Chess. Um, chess could be one. Chess. You know, 1v1 type of thing going on. Is, okay, is WWF the arcade game a fighting game? <sighs> you know... I want to say it is like it has life bars. It does. That's very uh, right, important. Right. It has life bars. It has combos. It has uh, special moves like Hadoukens and then like I think emotion inputs as well. It has four face buttons that are just like high punch, low punch, low kick, high kick. Yeah. My, my thing for wrestling games, and we'll talk about this going forward. You guys let me know is if you can pin in your game that's getting dangerously close to not being a fighting game because to me you can pin yeah yeah and it okay in wf the arcade you can pin but it's more like an animation that just happens yeah it is like uh when right? you when you when you lose all your health it's all automatic like one two three pin you can't even shake out of it type of thing yeah um, like so it's, it's kind of like a, fa a guarantee fatality guarantee ko was wwf Speaking the arcade game the one made by midway yes it's like the mortal Kombat devs right it's it's mostly I think it was a combination of the Mortal Kombat devs and NBA Jam devs. Yeah, yeah, they were because they were all it's, in the same room, pretty much. Yep. Yeah, like Sal Devita worked on like both franchises, for example, and yeah. Ed Boon. I don't know. He's not in it, but um, I think they're even supposed to have Mortal Kombat. I think there's like a rumor that Mortal Kombat characters would even be in uh, like put in the game, like in the um, mm. in the stands. That would be cool. On. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be really cool to see Scorpion cheering on like Lex Luger or like the Undertaker, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, Undertaker has like these uh Mortal Kombat moves ish. Like he sends he, out like these ghost fireballs and everything like that. So they have a lot of references from like iconic fighting games. So I I do think that version of of a of a wrestling game is like it's more closer to a fighting game compared to a wrestling game. Okay, so I, I mentioned about pinning before. You can pin in a game called uh, WWE All Stars, Max, I know you—you you might have said this on on this podcast before, but you're like, this is the the best wrestling game of it all is. time, All Stars, and I'm inclined to agree with you. But is it a fighting game? Um, it's funny because I I keep thinking about the the camera perspective, the mm. the wide out camera with essential infinite plane, where it's like your your x axis and your y axis is just like a complete mobile field. Um, and that's different than uh, like Virtual Fighter Tekken, where it's like circular. Your characters move around each other in many ways. Right. And then in a 2D game, obviously, it's just X axis. But how different is it than like, what was the old SNK ones where you can go up and down? It was like real bout, right? No, a Fatal Fury. Is, is yeah. it early the Fatal, Fatal Fury. Furies? Where you can essentially early go, Fatal Furies and real bouts. You can yeah. go left, right, but then also up, down. You don't have full circular motion, but you can go up and down. How much different it is than that? It's that's an interesting point, specifically Fatal Fury three. I remember seeing like one of your legacies when you went you you went to that and that had three planes yes. where that was like up yep. like normal a side to side left and right. And then like uh, in the foreground and that was almost circular. Yeah. Whereas the other ones were just kind of like back or forward. Like there was two versus three. So that's as three dimensional as a god. But the thing with the thing with all stars still is that pinning is still a thing you can set the game that's just on tkos so when the life bars just go down it's just you win right but also when a ring is involved and you can get in and out of the ring that's also i'm like mm, that's 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 different there's all these buttons that manipulate around the ring and get on the ropes and i'm like you're kind of veering towards something else but because all stars is so fun and has all these crazy combos and like chains and there's like matchups in that versus old ljn wwf games on the yep. super nintendo where there's almost no difference between characters like there is a little bit they sometimes have like little power gauges saying like oh his strength is five yeah. blah 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 but they don't have their own like special moves I, I think even one of those did not have signature moves at all everyone had the same move set I think it's probably the earliest ones, but like for wrestling to me, all stars is just skirting the line. But, uh, right before we started this podcast, uh, Justin's like, 
Which which wrestling game is the one that's got the arcade stick? It and has that- a Mac has joystick, bro. Like yeah. the fact yeah. that it has a, a Mac has joystick. And I remember like people going crazy about this joystick because uh, Alex Valle was actually super into WWE. Uh, really? All- yeah. yeah, he was into the WWE All Stars a lot. Like he likes these weird ass games. Like, he he yeah. plays Resident Evil, the Resistance to, to, game as well too. To throw this in, <laughs> Alex Valle was also incredibly good at Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. <laughs> someone yeah. someone had to be. <laughs> <laughs> right it's so just, it, so it's just like the fact that you have a joystick and you play it you could play that game on a joystick pretty i guess well on it i guess that's kind of leading into the fighting game area even though there is pin involved i'd say it's like if you're if you're into fighting games and not so much wrestling or like you're like interested in it like that's definitely the one to play in terms of like a competitive standpoint they added a ton of dlc characters in that game that i didn't even know about until much later like something like a half dozen like really? dlc characters were added to that like like old school guys like million dollar man and shit oh, and like shit. new school guys and i'm not sure if that stuff is still up i'll have to go it back and not check be. because it, it, if it's gone that's super disappointing how that all that yeah. content essentially lost to time to the xbox marketplace i don't know if it's gone i, I remember at least like five years ago i was like trying to to like look for it and i did find it so I'm not sure if it's it's still there, but WWE does take down shit all the time. Yeah. Like, oh, our last year's game, you can't play it online anymore. And like, that was a year ago, you know, stuff like that. So I don't know if the, the content is still there. I guess it kind of makes sense because like their roster are complete changes and they have like competition, like other like wrestling organizations like AEW now. So I guess like if they do get taken down, it probably makes sense because they can't use their likeness or anymore or they have to like you know they just don't want their yeah. characters associated I, with that right i don't type know of, type, WWE, of, type of thing i don't know if wwe still allows you to buy cm punk off their store <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, like real. that's stuff like that um so all stars i just forgot we might have mentioned this before but all stars has x mortal kombat guys uh kind of put in there not x mortal kombat but x um mortal kombat shaolin monks that company got sold to mid uh to thq when midway was going out of business they became thq san diego and they started making uh all stars and like um tna impact as well most of those ps2 era uh wrestling games though all the smackdowns i'm like that this is a wrestling game it's trying to simulate the sport the sport entertainment of of wrestling there's all these sim matches that you can do and the uh general manager mode and that's like getting to the area of where you're actually replicating what a sport is offering you just like all the 2k games they have general manager modes and and stuff and even ufc games ufc is really really a lot tougher because there is no ring manipulation you're not jumping off the ropes you're just two guys locked in a cage and that i i have no answer for that whether has that ever featured at a at a tournament that you've ever seen ufc games no 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 not a big fighting game tournament i had i have been offered like there was some ufc game three or four years ago or something where uh, one of the lead devs contacted me and i just had like no interest it was just like it's just not in my wheelhouse man i'm sorry yeah uh but I mean, it's it's weird, like, does... Because there's different classifications, right? And we can even start going over what was our personal, like, not fighting games, fighting games that we played, like, growing up, where the consideration could have been there, but it maybe wasn't or was. Because there's, like, wrestling games, there's UFC games, there's arena boxing. fighters, there's boxing games, there's platform fighters, and uh, there's eventual lobsters with knives and guns. Like there's there's, <laughs> there's a lot pets. of there's a lot of things in between. There's meme dogs and meme cats fighting each That's other too. That's definitely a fighting so, yeah. game. That one is one hundred percent a fighting game. And, and Jesus fighting Santa Claus is absolutely a fighting the game. Who doesn't fighting see game. <laughs> I I, uh, I could say for sure though, like a uh, one wrestling game that w- actually took, um, I guess a lot of uh, just people playing back in the day in New York City fighting game scene with like Arturo and Sanford and stuff like that. Uh, WWF No Mercy for the N64. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they went like I, I. A lot of people preach that this is like 
one of their best of, of all time, greatest of all time for, for wrestling games, but they treat it as fighting games. They were playing it super like defensive, offensive, matchups, meta. So they had a bunch of that type of stuff when I was growing up um, in Chinatown Fair. Like people would just play at like at the park after hours type of thing. Um, so I would say for that one, I, I definitely know that people ran tournaments for it. Uh, but for UFC, man, I, I would say UFC is probably the one that I'm just like, that's no, I don't think it's a fighting game whatsoever. Just because no uh-huh. life bars um, and mm-hmm. the, the hits are kind of based off kind of like the real life scenarios where it's like if you do a critical hit or a counter hit and you can't really tell, they just fall down and it's like, okay, okay, the match stops and everything. Kind of like real UFC fights. So I guess like that's kind of just, it's kind of random at so that point. You're telling me that these UFC games are, are like Monster Hunter where you essentially don't know how much health they have. You have to like hit yep. weak spots to do extra damage and then they just randomly die. Yeah, they just randomly fall and this is the match is over. Gotcha. Like I, yeah, because I remember playing this one time against like, I, I don't remember where I was, but they were trying to get me to play UFC and I'm playing it. I'm like figuring out like what's punch and kick and everything. And this guy's he knows how to play. So he's punching the crap out of me. Right. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I probably didn't hit him at all. And I hit him. I hit him one punch when he swung at the same time. And, but I won. But my punch was faster and he just fell down and I won the match. And I'm like, wait, what happened? It's he's like, counter oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a <laughs> counter hit. It's like real life scenarios and i'm like but you can't really tell it just doesn't it just happens so and all the move sets are very similar um so it's nothing there's no like diversity maybe besides like kind of like speed and like the the, the, the range of normals and everything like that but yeah it's i don't know there's, I, i'm there's, not a big fan of those games there's one thing that i i am I immediately call out where it's like oh this isn't a fighting game when when the devs actively promote and try to integrate into gameplay the fact that this is just like real life uh and then i'm like well okay yeah real life isn't exactly fair right when (laughs) you just get a random punch and it'll knock somebody out completely it's like that seems kind of like uh, unbalanced and wicked and i think that is ultimately the thing that boils down to what a lot of people might consider to be like like a fighting game is like how balanced is this do things counter other things in ways that make sense where like the risk reward makes sense yeah that, that's why wrestling is so weird in terms of video games because it's it's crazy re- rps heavy like rock paper scissors all over the place like, yeah counters yeah, and everything but it's also not realistic like depending on the game that you're playing sure. there are no life bars like no mercy doesn't have life bars It has its spirit meter, which constantly replenishes and comes back. Yeah. Like there's a point where you're so weak that you can die, but like you can come back from that. Like there's no final state unless you, I think there's like a TKO system can actually put on that. Someone can just get knocked out depending on certain circumstances. Um, I I have another, this is going to be really interesting because, uh, Justin said something where it's like, there's, there's randomness to it. And then there's, uh, no life bars. What is Bushido Blade? It has no life bars, and it's based on realism. So I feel like Bushido Blade is kind of like a. It reminds me of like footsies, like the the game footsies that a uh, high fight uh, throw out. Kind of like it's like this like one hit ko kind of mechanism for the most part if like if you like kind of like slice in the into like a similar i guess like in the, in the vital points of the area uh so it kind of reminds me of that which is kind of like the same as like that what's that that kirby reacting fighting game or i guess i don't know, you know oh it's like about? samurai samurai kirby yeah samurai kirby it kind of just reminds me of that so i don't even think of it as like a fighting game at that point and it's even, just kind of just like a reactionary game even bushido blade doesn't have like one hit kills all over the place it's only on critical strikes when you hit like yeah. vital body parts and stuff like that like all bushido blade really is is 3d samurai showdown fast like that's <laughs> what it boils down to but it's also just like fencing like you just have a game that's just fencing like aside from like blood and remember i'm not sure if this happened in bushido blade one or or two it happened in one where they had those multi, multi-stage stages that you could just run, yeah, run. like, and, and they connect and like, uh, they connect in kind of like a map and you could just run forever. And that's, that's an exciting it game to see in tourneys. open world fighting game. It, it kind of was, oh, when you say it like that, now I really want that. <laughs> like a Bushido Blade open world game or not like open, open world, but like a little village of surrounding forest. And you can just like, exactly go around to guys and like, uh, pick fights with Ow. them because Bushido Blade was weird when I first played it and just saw like 
there's no life bars. Like I know this game works as like just a uh, sword based thing, and you can't you can knock people's swords out of their hands, or you can break them or something. If I recall, ah, uh, yeah, you can you can de weapon just like Sam show. Mm, okay. okay, okay. Hey, Maximilian. Yes, uh, you're always a go go type of guy. You you need your energy, right? I need protein. You need <laughs> you need protein all the time. Well, uh, I'm here to talk to you today about uh, Magic Spoon. Uh, this is Serial Reinvented and Magic Spoon sponsoring today's episode. Uh, they'd like me to tell you about their four delicious flavors. This is the Variety Pack, and I've tasted all of these. Um, actually quite like all of these flavors. Cocoa, Fruity, Frosted, and Peanut Butter. Um, they also have a couple of new flavors out right now. S'mores? s'mores this is happening people and chocolate chip cookie um i i like those a lot as well and magic spoon has a lot of health benefits like zero grams of sugar 13 to 14 grams of protein yes <laughs> at, and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving it's only 140 calories per serving uh, they're also keto friendly gluten free grain free soy free and low carb I used to do the Saturday morning cartoon thing, and I would need to eat cereal. Can't do with the stuff on currently on the market, but Magic Spoon, I certainly can. Can you do the old school cereals at all, Maximilian? I don't think I've done old school cereals in 15 years or so. And as somebody that <laughs> grew up loving cereal, uh, this has me kind of excited that maybe I can enjoy cereal without worrying that it's destroying my body. Well, Max, if you click the link below and grab a variety pack and try it today, and be sure to use the promo code TKO at checkout to get $5 off any order or go to magicspoon.com slash TKO. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's back with a 100% guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Uh, so click the link in the description below and put in the code TKO for $5 off. Go to magicspoon.com TKO to save $5 today. Thanks, Magic Spoon. Um, and that's where I was like, okay, well, y the game really wants you to play with swords and stuff. And it was so different at the time. I'm still sad that series like never really continued. I think there was some sort of dispute between the original developer and Square or something like that. I'm not really sure, but... Because um, I think, so weirdly you, enough, I, I don't know if Enix made it. I, it might have been one of the old school devs, like Aiding or Dimps or something like that, or Cyber Connect. It's like, called Light. I think it was called Lightfoot or something like. Yeah, Foot or I, something I, like. I remember them having a connection to the usual fighting game developers, like eventually, like Bloody Roar devs or some weird shit like that. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, so that's a Square Enix fighter. Do we know of any other Square Enix? You fighting know, games God Some, bless, something something bless the ring something like that <laughs> i i first played i saw her guys at like a demo kiosk in like a future shop it's a um totally dead chain in in canada but it was our best buy for a long time and i saw it and that's where i played that for a while and i just remember i think i was um who's the i think the guy's name is actually kazia right there's like a yeah, kazia, waiter guy I think, yeah and i was playing him on like the train stage and that i just remember going like that was weird and i just walked away because i i never played like what is essentially the arena fighter or i, I didn't realize that i was i was like this is different this is strange because mm -hmm. this was before i ever played like power stone for example which is a much better version of that type of game fighting game design but arena fighters i don't think that's very contentious right it's just a sub genre under fighting game like well, that's not in dispute yeah you know it, it's it's tough i feel like a lot of people because that, that's kind of like where a lot of people talk about like fgc and smash right because like smash mm -hmm. as like platform fighters and they also use do arena fighters in their tournaments but like they're so separate from each other so like it's kind of hard to tell like where are they in that category uh but growing up i chinatown fair had an Urguys ca arcade cabinet and wow. that, that was when i actually played the game and i thought that it was like super fun super sick but it was definitely not the same as compared to like playing like a street fighter or like a mortal Kombat or like a you know a general like you know 2d 1v1 side scrolling kind of fighting game ish it was like kind of like you just run around and just do stuff and avoid attacks and everything um so it just became more tactical right uh but yeah I, it's just so hard to just call it 
a fighting game. Yeah, I think this goes under the what we were talking about with wrestling. There's there's classifications of like wrestling games. You know, I, I think one of the things that like having having the arena be the way it is with wrestling games, the fact that you can like ring people out, get out of a ring, get back into a ring, right? They're the life bar thing, the pinning thing. This goes under the typical arena fighter. And Urguys wasn't the first one to do this. The the game that predates all of this stuff, the first arena fighter ever was Virtual On. Oh yeah. And yeah, we, we discussed it. this a little while ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was only really at the advent of like a bunch of anime finally getting getting adapted into things. Uh Naruto being one of the biggest ones on the GameCube, the the uh Clash of Ninja not Clash of Ninja games. We know the, the the series I'm talking about. I'm sure Justin knows at least, right? It's like the GameCube ones. Yes. Yeah, I think it's I think it's called Clash of Ninjas, right? But I it think had that a, was no Naruto Tyson. It had Tyson, like a, yeah. yeah, Tyson. It had like a Japanese kind of like name into it, kind of like Tenkai, like Dragon Ball Budokai type of thing. But it's like Tyson, yeah. and it, it, I think it refers also to like uh, what arc of it? What arc is it? It has like like tuning exams and kind of like that. Yeah, so, it was really early stuff. The yeah. the first couple of games, but that was like. That was just like a weird perspective on that that game. Like it was dropped down low and it was just a bunch of like like I guess like four characters, up to four characters, just kind of running around. And it has that same thing as as Urgeis or even WF No Mercy, where you're kind of picking and choosing what who to fight. You're watching two people fight and you're just by yourself and you're playing more multiplayer. When you add in three players, Thrill Kill, another example, right? When you add in more than two players, it your tactics change very differently compared to if it's just one v one. Yeah, because you got to pick your battles. And me, I don't know about you guys, but I will run the fuck away oh, yeah. <laughs> and hit in the back like a hero. That or throw spam projectiles until it's just one v one again. It's so funny because when I played like wrestling games with like four people, and it's kind of like the Royal Rumble uh scenario. Like I would treat it like it was like the TV show where I'm like the villain, and I'll just like <laughs> go uh, outside of the ring because I didn't get like thrown over, and just hide behind like the like the below the ring, kind of like how wrestlers do it in actual shows. In yeah, yeah, Rumble sometimes shows. like the the huge cowards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah uh destrega another one that i haven't played in a long time but that was a massive arena game where you could get super super far from each other and your maps were huge like even even uh don't don't roll your eyes at me max but even bio freaks has like an arena style thing to it where you're locked in these gigantic sort of stages and then there's hazards and you're just kind of avoiding them and you could just fly away because your characters could just fly and even yeah. um god uh not uh what's what's the 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 anime-ish fighting game where you're in the air all uh, the time psych psychic force psychic force yeah yeah, yeah. psychic force yeah Psych psychic force you, you you kind of fly you fly around and then there's like a giant like rectangle rectangular grid and you're like throwing yeah. projectiles yeah it's psychic force for like PlayStation One I remember playing psychic force on a lot of those games yeah. that give you like big arenas and stuff like that they're projectile focused Destrega is like a really big projectile game so uh -huh. it, it it has that a huge element where you're throwing a shit ton of fireballs at each other and dodging them like crazy yeah which is like a whole like that's to me that's getting to the non virtual, virtual on area yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of getting more towards that where it's more about projectile avoidance than, you know, may like even something like Custom Robo, which owes itself a lot to Virtual On, obviously, is not really that much about melee. It's about shooting missiles and things. But they, it is. They have all this screen space. What are you going to do with it? Run at each other and then hit each other and run away? <laughs> like, what are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, because then, then what's the point? Yeah. So um, then it comes down to, to Power Stone, of course. And. When I first played Power Stone, I'm not sure if we can ever dedicate an entire episode to Power Stone, but here's this time for, to shine where I'm like, I'm playing that and I'm like, holy shit, this changes the game. And not because it was doing anything drastically different from stuff like Urgeis or whatever, which predated by like a year or two, I'd say. But there was just something about how smooth that played, that sort of like late 90s Capcom feel. Where I'm like, holy shit, this is like a whole new genre, even though you know, technically wasn't just marketed as a fighting game for, by Capcom. But like, do, do you think like Arena Fighters really started kicking off since sort of Power Stone kind of nailed the feel? Or it's, it's weird that Power Stone came out, and I remember back in even 1999 when we played it, um, having the perspective of Smash Brothers at some point. 
where it's like we even knew about N64 Smash, and I can't remember if they were out around the same time, but for some reason Power Stone, even in the early 2000s, got the moniker that it is like Capcom Smash. Yeah. Which mm. is which is yeah. weird that everyone felt that way because they are very different games. Smash Brothers is a 2D platformer. So yep. you oh, there's no 3D plane in Smash. Maybe there's 3D hitboxes, but they are those are strictly a 2D game just with platforms. And and Power Stone's not, man. Power Stone's like a big ass arena game with like crazy projectiles and, you know, power-ups and a, a ton of items type of stuff. And I think that is the reason now that I'm thinking about it, that's the reason why everyone attached the items. itself. The items. Yeah. The random element to it. And just how, like, relatively simple it played. Like, it had all this interaction with the arena, but, like, what your characters can do is just, like, punch, kick, grab, yeah. yep. essentially. But they have, like, this easy-to-remember assortment of special moves and, like, one big super attack, and that's and that's basically it. And yeah. you know, it's, all, it's all colorful and, like, fantasy-filled and stuff. But, like, w I was always waiting for more power stone and i know it's like a meme nowadays where we're always like capcom where's power stone where's power stone but even like in 2001 like the dreamcast versions of power stone are like you know been out for a while and i'm always waiting like oh, okay capcom is making tons of games on the ps2 where's the power stone at yeah and i'm not sure if you guys have ever read or heard like did power stone just not perform well did, i know aikino had like a like a a huge amount of um like a, a producer on it and then you just started producing other things yeah you can, i'm not I think really you sure know was the was the director of power stone 2 yeah i, I mm. believe um and yeah it's got that like it, it's very much similar to rival schools like directing style gameplay style where game is very simple on a surface level but has unique depth like power stone has all these like hidden mechanics that they don't tell you about where if like you bounce off walls and stuff you get invulnerability and all this yeah. like goofy interactions that'll happen as a result of it and the same thing is sort of in rival schools in a lot of ways so mm -hmm. i i think it i'm i'm 99 sure uh it just didn't sell amazing i think power stone 2 was probably the cementing of it because they barely made any copies of power stone 2 which is why it's so it's rare, expensive yeah. and it's yeah. very rare i i would assume that that's the reason but I, I don't know if we've got, I, I, I'll tell you the biggest reason is that Power Stone PSP collection probably sold 30 copies in total. So <laughs> oh, they no. just went, they just went, oh, we're done. It just seems like the, I guess like when they were making all these like uh, character models for like into like more 3D-ish, I guess those games didn't really do too well from the Capcom side. Like that's why I guess you don't really see Rival Schools coming back and Power Stone coming back. Yeah, that's a good point. Capcom's early 3D foray, the first five yeah. years of them doing 3D uh, in fighting games, didn't really result in anything with lasting power. Yeah. Yep. Like not Tech Romancer, not Star Gladiator. Yeah. Not they Rival just all schools, kind of not Power Stone. Yeah, they just all kind of died out, and then if if the best you can get is kind of like guest collabs or like skins, like Hayato and Marvel Two type of thing, and like yeah. even like uh, rival school skins. There was, I think there was a Power Stone skin in Street Fighter Five as well. Oh yeah, too, there's Ken, there? you can you can dress up Ken as Falcon. Okay, yeah. So it's like that's the best you'll get is probably the skins instead of just like anything else. Thing Minot certainly has another one in there too. Somewhere. It sort of boils down to one of those Capcom franchises where the best chance you got is if a versus game shows up, you know, yeah. and they might be a character in a versus game like Darkstalkers. It would be kind of cool for a Power Stone character to come back for a versus series. That's kind of how like Captain Falcon came back as a as a f fighting character in like Smash Brothers because normally, I mean, playing F Zero, I I never see any. I never seen Captain. Falcon. I just saw the like the car right yeah. type of thing. Yeah, so like he's him, usually yeah. just a list. He's yeah. usually just a name on the screen or whatever. That's it. You don't really see. Yeah, him it's kind of like Jin from Cyberbots. Like you, 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 yeah. Like you don't you don't really see him fight. He just pilots, and then it's mainly the pilot that has all the the mechanisms of like the the as as a character compared compared to Jin as the pilot. Yeah. Hey, you're explaining why, all... why I love Versus games so much, because those are the only games where those characters have a chance. <laughs> yeah, I know. And they, they, they're and they look so shine. cool. They, look, they do. They, look, they, they, do. they made them look like super cool because they knew they had to make an impression because most people might not even know, like, what was this guy from? But I was going to say, like, Power Stone 2 came out in, like, 2000. And it always shocked me that Capcom just didn't do, like, a quick and dirty port onto the PS2 because yeah, it came true. out that year. And then I was thinking, well, Hold on a second. When did the PS2 four player adapter come out? Was that a launch peripheral? Maybe they so. just. I don't know. May, it was close even to if launch. Not, I, was, I assume it was close to launch. I was going to say, even if not, like, not a lot of companies use the four player adapter all that much. Like, there's examples where they could have used it, but it requires extra testing. Maybe, like, you know, the, the, 
to really get the most out of this, people are going to have to pay for the adapter, and they're like, ah, it's not worth it, or whatever. Then, th then I jumped to, why didn't they just make a GameCube port? That came out in 2001. That's and I, I don't I don't know why they just didn't attempt to at least put a, a, one more port there. Because, like, all those, you know, admittedly pretty solid Capcom PSP collections, or, like, little remakes, like, I, I'm not, I've never heard of an example of those selling super well. For whatever reason, like maybe there were like uh, Dark Stalkers and um, Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins. Like I'm assuming they didn't because they didn't really continue it with it that much. But like you're probably right that it sold like 30 copies. Well, Power Stone, Dark Stalkers crazy, only yeah. came out in Japan. Yeah, the crazy part is I didn't even know Power Stone had a PSP collection. So yeah, I just wasn't aware of that. I, I the only thing I remember from Capcom for doing PSP was kind of like uh, with Dark Stalkers and then. What else? The Mega yeah, Man, the, the Mega, the Mega Man Maverick Hunter, um, and yeah, Cap just, Capcom yeah, went kind of ham it. on PSP. There's a there's a ton of unique PSP Capcom games around that time frame, hmm. but yeah, like Power Stone was just randomly thrown in there. It's just that like the PSP could do them all so well. It can like you know display 2D sprites really well, and the early 3D stuff like you know no problem you know to boot. But uh, I was gonna say so going into smash a little bit yeah yeah smash a fighting game like yes of course it is because the platform fighter is now such a an established thing like it's not like smash is the only game in town and even when smash started like the there were other platform like even going back to naruto the ps2 naruto games were smash games essentially they're just on a 2d plane and you're just got mobility to jump from like thing to thing and uh TV dream mix world fighters that we've mentioned before. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think even though technically the health bars in most cases, not all games go up. Doesn't mean anything. It's still a health bar. Yeah. yeah you don't get KO'd, but you might as well just be KO'd because like breathing on a character will knock them out of the arena. And like is stock is, does stock make for a fighting game? Uh, I don't I mean, know, but I mean, stock is like kind of like it, it, I think it's it's, it's, a, it's, a diff, it's a different way of looking at rounds because I mean, Killer mm -hmm. Instinct kind of does that stock ish if you think about it. That's true. Yeah, little, Vampire Savior started that. Yeah, y yeah, but you got your health replenished, right? No, like no, both bo really. Yeah, Injust only King, only yeah, only King of Fighters and in, Injustice, in, in uh, Vampire Savior, and Killer Instinct had the same life management. Yep. Okay. I could. I just. Oh, I, the, the earlier no Dark Stalkers. No, Dark Stalkers one and two. They're normal. Normal. Oh, life so bars. just for vampire. Just savior. vampire savior. Okay. So I mean, oof, I learned something new on TKO every yeah, day. Yeah. No, no, I think. I think the only thing when you're thinking about life regen for vampire saviors is like when you get hit, you get that kind of like that white life that you can recover. Uh, but besides that, if you if a if a round is actually over over, you don't get a life back at all from that situation. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, Maximilian, tell us about Def Jam Fight for New York. <laughs> um, that game is everything, right? It's not just <laughs> a wrestling game. Uh, it's not just like a brawler. Uh, there's, there's so many different like fighting styles that they cram into it. And I was always under the impression that that game predated Vendetta, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. it, essentially, mm -hmm. it essentially threw what was the kitchen sink of Aki games into a game and they were just like oh here's everything here's everything we've ever made and we're just it's it's the it's the elden ring of wrestling games so they they cram all these different play styles that every character can use and you can combine play styles with every character that make them play way different to the point where yeah some characters just don't even grab you like they, they yeah. barely do any grabs they just they just kickbox the shit out of you or they do street fighting and they'll literally kill you with a punch so to me, it's like I, I completely understand why everybody, like, why there would be a competitive scene around it, why it is like considered a fighting game nowadays. And to me, it's like I consider it like a competitive brawler in in, in a lot of ways because there is so okay. many different ways you can play it. Like you can play yeah. it like a wrestling game if you want. You can play it with like uh, it's got a very unique system of pinning, right? Where you can essentially KO via specific means depending on your style. Like, they kill you with very specific moves, which is, like, not a random element. They die from that. But you don't actually pin pin. Like, it's not, like, a count one, two, three. Sure. It's, 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 but what you're saying is still true where it's, like, 
well, we talked about this a little bit before. I think it's because like your uh, a person's health can always go back to the non danger state. It's sure. always refilling. So every character has a thing like a uh, submission that can make them just give up, but their, their energy has to be low enough or the, the KO punches yeah. or a throw. And that's what makes it so weirdly unique. Like that's not even really what any other wrestling game has done before. Yeah. That's not really what most fighting games do. It and was something yeah. brand new. That's the weird thing about it is that, and even me, when you would play Def Jam, you would come back to it every few years and play it. You're just like, how the fuck do we kill each other? We've been sitting here beating <laughs> yeah, yeah, the holy yeah. crap out of each other for 45 minutes and nobody's dying. What is going on? And it's because whatever character you pick, depending on their class, has a, has a variety of ways to KO. And if you don't land that KO hit, it, you'll just be slapping each other till eternity. So mm. it's it, it, it's fascinating. Like it's, it, I think the biggest thing it boils down to is that the game is good. Number one, mm -hmm. it's it's a great game with a ton of content and it's really fun to to fight. Uh, so people naturally gravitated towards it and it grew into a, a, a bunch of people that play it like as hardcore as they possibly can just because they love it. I think I think what constitutes a fighting game is how much do people love the game? And if they love it enough, they'll find other people that love it enough and it'll become a fucking fighting game. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's crazy because when you mentioned that, I mean, we just had a tournament pass at, at CEO. CEO. Yeah, and I it, watched it, a lot it, of it. And it was an official tournament, Def Jam. And, you know, there's just a lot of rules, like so many characters. I think what there's like like 30 characters are banned because they're broken <laughs> and there's meta and then they actually have frame data as well too sure. uh, with with like meaties and okies like they took it so seriously um that it just got so much like spotlight at ceo right and i could see even coming it back next year too that's the crazy part because it's it just it was a hype game to watch at ceo so there's like something like 65 characters. They're so saying half the cast is banned. Yeah, it's yeah. a huge list of so, characters being banned competitively. So that, no throws out, that throws out our like, is the random slash balance element is what makes a fighting game? Nope. <laughs> Not at <laughs> all, no. no. I th and, it really boils down to how much people love it. And there's a reason why like, I'm sure some people still play it, but Vendetta is not, has the, doesn't even have close to the same amount of support uh, fight for new york does because vendetta is still to me very much a wrestling, wrestling game, game because yeah well you could uh, well you could knock out people it was still all about the pins and almost all arenas i think were just rings it was just wrestling rings whereas like and there's a lot of variation and fight for new york i think there's like one wrestling ring like the training ring yeah where uh, henry rollins has you has you always roiding yourself out but most of them are like either like bars or rooftops or whatever, like fighting game stages and stuff. Um, what I don't remember, because it's been a long, because I just touched it the one time and I'm like, yeah, no thanks, I'm good, was uh, Def Jam Icon. And that's a game with like life bars and it was meant to be much more like boxing slash fighting. Like all the wrestlingness of that was kind of taken out from Fight to New York and now it's just kind of like, a whole other beast and that was made by the um uh ea's fight night um devs at the time and that might that might lead us to boxing in general because boxing i think there's like one maybe two examples of a game where i'm like yeah that's getting into a fighting game sort of territory yeah. but to me like boxing is just there's realistic boxing and then there's the punch out style of puzzle boxing where you're just trying to figure out your opponent and like the, the pattern, AI, because yeah. there is no competitive element for most of it. Aside from that, do you guys remember that one weird one v one mode in Punch Out for the Wii, where you're both Mac and you could turn into like the Giga Mac, the Big Mac? I forgot that I it know? was a two player. Yeah, yeah. I only played the single player, uh, but I, I I I played the game, but I just never the multi the, the two player version. Because, yeah, because it was realistically, bizarre. punch out if you do single player is a rhythm game. Like yeah, it it's is. on it's practically like if there was music, it would just be a, a different skin <laughs> dance dance revolution. Yeah, just have the arrows just going up. Oh, so much on that. <clears throat> There's one boxing game I know of. Um, I think it's called Best of Bout, or like it was like a 1994, 1995 uh arcade boxing game where the, it was side view. And you had all these crazy characters. You had one guy whose arms stretched like Dalsim. You had like, and there, these were fighting game fucking characters. Like the dude from Britain has super long hair and he, 
He's got like a, the Union Jack on his on his did, boxing gloves. Did the main guy look super Baki like? Yes, I think mm. so. Yeah, I think Best I've seen this game. Bow. It's 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 like the the ring is like halfway up. You can actually see the ropes, but it's just yeah. like a two D like left and right boxing game with like yeah, very and SNK you have, looking sprites. Very SNK, and if I recall, you have a special moves where like. Yes, it was called uh, best uh, best bout boxing. Best bout box. I think I yeah, played it looks this. hype as fuck. I think I played this at uh, Galloping Ghost. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be super, surprised. Did, did yes. Just, yes, I have. Oh, this, yeah. This game looks super sick, actually. Yeah, like huge character sprites, right? Like absolutely yeah, yeah, freaking yeah, massive. Yeah. So look at this select screen that I just I, I just dropped into our chat. No, that like, looks that cool. Is a, fighting game select screen. Right? It is a fighting game select screen. Even the versus and everything is like so, it. I remember people have uppercuts in this where they have like dragon punch style like fire or like energy on them and, and things like that. And I never played it too much. It's something I, I should probably see if I can get working. But I remember seeing that just like, oh, boxing. Oh, my God. Yeah, boxing and fighting games finally together at last. And, you know, obviously it's a pretty obscure game. It didn't really go anywhere. I'm not even sure if it's made by SNK. I think it might be made by like Taito or something. It looks like SNK too. That's the crazy. It part. does. Yeah, it does. I think that's why I got that impression because I saw you. You walk by this machine, and you're like, "Oh, that's just an SNK game." Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Jelco. 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 What the hell? Jel Jellico. <laughs> uh, uh, Jellico. They made a couple of random games like, um, uh, you know, that one box art on the Super Nintendo where it's like a cool kid in like a leather jacket, it's like a photo of him, and there's like another like cool guy behind him. I think a rival turf. Oh man, yeah. This 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 is what I was thinking of here. Check this out. Uh, Check this. I, I, I think this is very Baki like, but this is apparently what the main character looks like. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, I think this is Baki. I'm just not really good with anime, but like no, the that's, main, that's, that's that's Ipo. Ipo, thank you. Uh, not Baki. Yeah. That looks like Ipo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ipo. Ipo. It just is um, like is that? It's like what? Okay. <laughs> Just as a quick reminder, a big shout out. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey. It is the easiest way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. And if any of you guys do any type of online shopping, how often do you do it? How frequently do you wish you could save some money on it? And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is actually a thing of the past. This app actually does it for you. It's a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones to your cart. Just think of how many times you visit those frequent websites, how many times you get daily items or monthly items or things like that i can say personally and i think justin has had a couple opportunities himself where we save some money on things that we're just desperately needing between tech items or kitchen items or stuff like that justin is there anything new that you're picking up a lot of um, kitchen items yeah we bought a lot of kitchen items I, I know we talked about it many of times but recently i actually been on the market because vancouver is such a green city i've been looking for a bicycle right i've been trying to look for a bicycle and and there are some places where I already saw the coupon working automatically because literally when I'm searching and I'm on any site, Honey just comes out and just says, hey, man, you can save some money right here. So I am actually currently on the market of buying a bicycle. And, you know, thanks to Honey, I can see what type of savings there are available. Nice. So yeah, if uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Honey doesn't just work on your desktop. It also works on your iPhone. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and you can save on the go. And if you don't already have Honey, you could be just straight up missing out. And by getting it, you're doing yourself a huge solid and supporting Triple KO, the show, our own show. And we usually recommend things that we absolutely use. And I think all of us have used Honey a couple of times. So if you guys want, get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash TKO. That's joinhoney.com slash TKO. It's it's really really similar to them, uh, but you know, talking about SNK, I was just watching a video. Oh, God, I forget I forget who wrote it, but um, it was like a video like three or four days ago. It just said Bariki won SNK's like most unique game. Oh, that's from a theory theory the guy win quotes. Yes, guy win quotes. Thank yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, I watched um, that video too. That that video looked like that game looked super sick too. You're you're familiar with that one. A little bit, Max, or no? I, I saw the fact that you used the like the analog stick, like the, the joystick is where you threw attacks from. Like it was super bizarre, like different playing than a, a traditional fighting game controller scheme wise. Yeah. And uh the SNK took the main character Guy Tendo, hmm. I think. Uh 
they put him in like a I forget which KOF it was, but they put him in in a, in a random KOF, I believe. But like this was one of the Hyper Neo Geo 3D Neo Geo games that they developed. It was the last one they ever made, and like yeah, it's more like a fighting tournament like there's brackets yeah. and things and it's presented like you know just a big martial arts tournament and i don't think there's no like fireballs there's no nothing it's more like just mixed it's more like mma just yeah. essentially like close like, combat way ahead of its time bariki won and from what i've ever seen people talk about it's like mostly just considered like oh yeah it's an snk fighting game it's weird it's different but it's kind of still sort of thrown in there i guess but um, right before, uh, Def Jam, um, I was thinking, oh yes, of course, Urban Rain. Do you think the same thing as what you're talking about for, for Def Jam, where it's a more of a competitive brawler? Cause I had never played the versus mode. I always played the single player mode and I get bored of it really quickly. Cause I don't think the single player modes as good as of Def Jam and stuff. But when I played the uh, versus mode with you guys and your video games, I was like, holy shit, I didn't even realize you could do half this stuff because it required so many, it required four people on screen and teaming up versus just going against the CPU where not a lot of shit happens because the CPU is not, you know, working yeah. with you. But playing that, I was like, that's, that's, it's Wait, even more hmm. fighting gamey to me than um, Def Jam when you're fighting four player Def Jam. Like that's, there's something about it where you're jumping off the walls and yeah. doing things. There's not, there's the, and all the weapons too. Like the only weapons you get, you get them very occasionally in um, Def Jam, like uh, a crowd member gives them to you or whatever, but you can just set so that there's weapons and katanas and shit all, all, all over. Time, yeah. So yeah. I, I never played Urban Rain, but I'm looking at it and I, I just see guess I just see Law and Paul Phoenix. Yeah, it's so yeah, the second, they like guest collab, collapse. The, huh? the second characters I think are the last to unlock and they're crazy broken. And, it, yeah, it's, and, it's, and is it a it's a it's up to a four player game too so it's just like uh def jam like it, oh, it plays okay. out very similar where it's like four players full 360 movement you know you can move anywhere yeah. in the screen you jump off walls type stuff you just you haymaker people like it, it is essentially like in, in in theory a very similar to def jam kind of situation i can't it's been a while since i played urban rain i can't remember how you ko somebody I can't remember how the exact stipulations are to kill. Well, there's, yeah, like, a remember, life, there's like a life bar. So yeah, they I might mean, just I, have traditional yeah. Bamco life bars, but it is a Bandai yeah. Namco game. Yeah, oh, but just, yeah, d this was made by like a, a offshoot of the Tekken team. Like it has Tekken moves just thrown in there as well, as well as Law yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and Paul. Yeah. Um, but like, do you, do you think that's like more of a competitive brawler? Or do, you, do you, from what you remember, it's like, yeah, that's the versus component. Cause the main draw of that game is it's single player mode. Yeah. Right. I think and it, I guess Def Jam as well. It really, yeah. To me, it, like it's just offshoot. Def, it's Def Jam with less personality, right? Let's be yeah. real. Like Def Jam is it, the thing that drew you into Def Jam was the fact that it had uh danny uh, trejo essentially a roster <laughs> of characters representing early 2000s rap and hip-hop that was unrivaled just mm -hmm. absolutely ridiculous amount of like roster and characters that'll never happen again um and it's the thing the thing that made it appealing was the fact that it was actually a good game like the single player mode is some of the best single player fighting game stuff there is and the fact that there's a billion different play styles means meaning that you'll never play the game the same if you try to play it like unless you really want to there's a like a ton of different you could like dark souls you know load out your way through the game in some completely weird way if you want mm -hmm. to and try to beat it with some weird combination of like street fighter and wrestler or some weird thing uh and it's essentially what icon was missing where Icon is like, hey, you know, we got the music and we got the rappers. That's what you want, right? <laughs> right? And that's all we got. And that was it. it. It was essentially missing the 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 flair that the like the, the Japanese wrestling games had essentially had for so long. Like what you wanted to see was, you know, uh, you wanted to see like not 50 Cent do some giant spinning haymaker pile driver and then kick a dude in the nuts. Like you yep. wanted some and, and they went to like boxing in the next game, which was like, oh, this is not the big like boisterous giant wrestling game where I'm spinning a dude like he's a like he's a top on his head and then kick him into space type of shit. Like it was missing all that that flair. I, I don't think Icon even had like more than two players. Like, you know, the only it was only one V one in every situation. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm I'm off base on that. 
But the other thing, Max, I'm not sure if you heard about this, but they started a Def Jam Icon 2 for lack of a better term. I don't think they're going to call it Icon 2 or whatever. Just call it Def Jam something. They're making a sequel and they were like, we got to do the old stuff again. So there was going to be more throwing, more, more. There's going to be actual blazing moves. There were no blazing moves in Def Jam Icon. Which no, because is crazy it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't the same game it wasn't a wrestling game yeah. it wasn't a, a brawler game it was just like a not boxing game where you scream and the walls explode okay also big ups to the def jam uh twitter for always lying to us every year about bringing def jam back thanks guys very yeah, that's, that, that, yeah, that's funny though right <laughs> every every <laughs> single time they tweet it's, it's actually, not funny just it's actually it's the it's same tweet from a few years yeah. earlier <laughs> They so, just remake the they, they remaster the tweet. They, they just do it again to get engagement, and they're lying to you. They're not. It's oh, not going to happen. Man. That's funny you know, though. Whenever they do that, you see everyone come out to fucking dump hype. on them. You see Austin Creed in their second one. He's like, "Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> You're <They're>, lying. <laughs> don't lie to me." But you know, speaking of boxing games, right? Because there yeah. was just, there was just so many boxing arcade games and boxing console games growing up. Um, what do you ever play a uh, title fight in the arcades? No. Title fight. Title fight is this one. Uh this game pretty much it, it had oh, like yeah, these yeah, two Yes, I know this one. Right. It, I I played this a crap ton and then there's it was actually kind of like a meta in, involved in, really? in terms of yeah, in terms of like it's not just like I guess when when you when people just play they just go like this, right? And just like kind of mash and stuff, but there there's obviously there's like blocking there's like strikes and there's kind of stuff like that so i remember just being a bully at the arcade just playing <laughs> this and people could not take me off the machine playing this game really so what it, yeah. had, it had like two connected cabs because it's essentially not yeah. first person it's like it's like a uh, punch out like wire fighter exactly yeah Punch out with a link cable, pretty much. So then, the, the, on the on the other side, there's like the red cabinet, and then you're versus each other. You, there's also single play, like arcade mode, and going through it. Um, but pretty much, essentially, it's like kind of like a karate champs. Like every character has the same move, and but then you just have to find different ways to kind of like I guess beat each other up. Yeah, yeah. Um, we talked about uh, Hajime Ippo a little bit, and there was like a couple of uh, PS2 and Wii versions of that. I don't recall if they had two player and there's also a GBA one that was done much like punch out, but there is a PS3 version that came out. I think there's even PS4. I just dropped a, a link in there. Um, th this had a big like two player mode with a bunch of characters and this was hype as fuck. This, this particular, this, this it PS3 looks good. Game. Yeah. It looks super sick. A yeah. And unfortunately it never got released in English and stuff. Aww. So I did have, I did have to import it, but it was really good because it's around this time I had finished all of Hajime no Ippo. And Hajime no Ippo, even like, of course, it's an anime. Like any sports anime starts like skirting the line of reality of oh, what you can do. And the fact that like plenty of like Street Fighter characters were like modeled after some Hajime no Ippo characters a little bit like or vice versa. I can't remember which first, but there's a guy called Mashuba who just is dalsim he can like stretch his limbs but it's like oh, no yeah. he just you've been no it's just it's an illusion it's he he, he does this fucking style no no, no yeah, yep, yep. yeah i the, remember the, what you're talking about yeah the flicker and it gets into like you know the i epo you can do this move <laughs> But if you miss, you'll die. Like the, corkscrew blow, like Dudley's corkscrew, corkscrew blow. blow, and uh, rolling thunder is from Hajime no Ippo. Yeah, because it's because the way that they they the way that the uh, main author draws it, he's like he he drew it like a fighting game, for example. So having Hajime no Ippo boxing games to me is kind of like uh, there's a lot of fighting game crossover there. I'm gonna give it to Hajime. You know, it's close. It's it's close there because the way the character you mentioned, Mashiba, when he's doing the flicker, it reminds yeah. me actually of uh, Yamazaki's uh, just doing yes. the snake arms, right? Thank so when you. so so when it, when there's a scene where he's just mashing like this, it just looks like his uh, his command grab super way you have where he gets he just does that all the time, and mm -hmm. then with uh, Hajime no Ippo doing the the rolling thunder, uh, it's it's actually a real a real move in real life that people that boxers don't use anymore. They do and the the the, the, Dem it, the Dempsey roll. The Dempsey roll, they can't do it because if they miss, they die. Their yeah, hearts. Yeah, yeah, they get smoked, right? So, <laughs> so it's just really cool to see like core screw blow for sure and everything like that. Uh, I, I, I guess like when it comes to like the older animes, they do have a lot of like kind of like that 
arcade Street Fighter reference or fighting game reference in general in in their actual shows. Yeah, a lot. Uh, uh, Max, for for you, there's this one boxer that like he just has a straight punch and he hits you in the chest and he's like, your heart will now stop for five seconds. And you're just frozen. Yeah, but and you can't get up because of it. So he's just like, I'm not gonna kill you, but this will <laughs> make your heart stop for like five seconds, and they're just stunned. And and then they play the jet engine sounds whenever uh Epo does the thing. Like there's and there's like ultra instinct sometimes. It'll zoom on, on his on his eye and he's got Out like this eyes. green this green yep. galaxy that's swirling his eyes because he's tapping inst into instinct. So I think I think you're actually perfectly describing one thing that I think will easily identify a game, oh. uh, a combat game as being a fighting game, presentation. Mm. So you get these games that are like b based on realism. They don't really feel like fighting games, right? But then you get a game that is all hyper focused on presentation and these giant impacts and the special moves feel real special and all this kind of stuff. And suddenly it starts feeling very fighting game like, you know? Even Virtua Fighter, which takes a very scaled back approach, like, you know, hit sparks just the un like people jumping like 12 feet into the air that's enough and of course doral like any sort of, like they just put a little bit of element in there to make you go okay here's some spice in case you don't like your akira or your jackie which are essentially just like normal humans yeah all um, so but, but they did enough where it's like tekken is like you know tekken 2 like day one all here's here's uh raptors and and kangaroos <laughs> and shit so that lets you know right off the bat but is there is there a fighting? I'm trying to think of one right now that like does it that's even more scaled back than Virtua Fighter, where it is a fighting game, but the presentation is like super like it's limited, just, like lim like super just martial uh, artists. I, gu I guess doing normal closest things. thing is maybe DOA, but DOA is a fighting game already. DOA is pretty insane though. Yeah, like, but it, I'm but not sure if you could call the girls in DOA realistic. Yeah, I, I think I, uh, there are I, dinosaurs in DOA. Uh, I think I think the if you want to talk about yeah, like what is the most like reserved fighting game that is still absolutely a fighting game, but more emulates that realism more than any other. That's Virtual Fighter, one hundred percent. There's I don't think there's any other game outside of VF5 that tries to make like real life combat into a fighting game, but it's still crazy. Like it's still yeah. like yeah. virtual fighters nuts Maybe. because look at the juggling. Like just just look at the way you actually get damage in VF. <laughs> it's not realistic in any way. But the way yeah. characters move, that was that was the one of the big goals of VF five was to create some of the most realistic movement in a fighting game there was. That was where they spent all their budget. Because uh, every VF tries to innovate in some weird, crazy way, and that's where their money went. And yeah, it's it, you, dude, dude. It shows like some of the animation transitions look crazy realistic in VF. Uh, when and it's it's a big polarization because you get these amazing looking moves and characters, and you get these sound effects from 1994. <laughs> <laughs> so like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, I, oh, or the I, airplane sound the airplane on sounds. on on any roundhouse and stuff. Like, I, I'm I'm pretty sure you you can find one of those like realistic. Uh, uh, like not over the top fighting games during the PS1 era because there was so many of those. Yeah, <sighs> like K1, K1. You know that on the PS1, it was like K1 Battle Road or something. It was just, it was just martial arts. God, I think it was K K1 Grand Prix. I, I, I know the box art, but I don't know. Bro, I never played it. it. That sounds like a racing game. <laughs> yeah, no, I know it does. K1. Yeah, yeah. K1 Grand Prix. That's what, or K1 the Arena Fighters. Oh, look at this shit. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, I'll drop this in for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. That Ew, that looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? It almost looks Bro. like Muay Thai boxing, like in, in several ways, you know? Or just kickboxing just and kickboxing stuff. kickboxing in general, yeah. Wait, is that Jean-Claude Van Damme? No. Bro, I'm gonna say no, it's, it's, it's not at Jake, all. Okay, I was just, I just, I just see Jake claude and I'm like, is that supposed to be a, a spin-off Jean-Claude? <laughs> A, a game like that is like I played one or two of these like ever, and that's like, I mean, it's just an, a variant of boxing, you know. At the end of the day, I can't, I don't know if there's ever like one of these these K one games because now when I'm looking up, there seems like there's multiple versions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if there's one that's like more fighting gamey, where like you know you're doing crazy specials and stuff like that. But I, I, I tend to think not because I would be playing it, you know, by now. A contender, 
Contender was a boxing series on the PlayStation that was like the 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 characters were very fighting gamey. Uh, contender, uh, yeah, like this guy just looks like Adon. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, contender, yeah, yeah. These all these games are like the same thing with different camera angles. Yeah, they look really yeah, similar. Uh, I have never played in like versus. I played the single player plenty, but uh, Capcom fighting at its finest is what the sticker said on the box of Beatdown Fists of Vengeance. Uh, which had a big, dumb single-player mode that was even more elaborate than Def Jam or uh, certainly Urban Rain, where you just it was an open world and you just ran around. But it had a versus game component, had crazy, weird characters, and you have special moves in that. I have not played that in a competitive environment, and I would like to, just to see what it's like. But that game was made by Kavia, who don't have the best track record in the world. They, you know, they helped out in some games, but... I just love that sticker, just to let you know. Capcom fighting at its finest. <laughs> we need something to we need something to sell you on this shit because it, it yeah, that, exactly. that game I forgot existed until I saw it on my Xbox of just like yeah. games. So I was like, <laughs> "What is this? Like, wait a minute, did this just get mixed in between like Urban Rain and like uh, uh, Urban Rain slash fi the Final Fight game Streetwise? I, I thought it was Final Fight Streetwise, and it was not. It feels like it's the exact same game, but with a different they were, title. They were released like with like less than a year. Wow! In between yeah. each other, which makes you think someone at Capcom marketing was not paying attention no. at all. Because why? Let's release the exact same game almost in a, in a lot of respects and stuff. But what what really makes me sad about this game, I thought for sure, like, oh, I remember that Beatdown exists. I'm going to look it up and I'm going to for sure find that Capcom lent out one or two cool characters like Paul or Law in Urban Rain. And I'm looking, I'm looking, though, no, they got to be there. I'm, now I'm looking up pro action replay codes to see if there's anybody. I'm like, they didn't even try. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you couldn't have Cody least... or Guy or anything. Yeah, none of that. No. Super sad. It's but, funny. Uh, it's funny. We, we look at all these, like, like games like Contender and K1 and like all these like emulated boxing games where it's like, are these fighting games? They have life bars and stuff like that. I think we're missing the real question here. The real is question that? is how is, uh, how is ready to rumble the premier graphics fighting game of the early two thousands? You know, it has, it, it has a rumble mode. It has like an instinct mode. It had life bars. I mean, Bro, you know what's that, crazy? I never played Ready to Rumble. You never had? Really? No, never had. I mean, it's weird because Max is right where it's a boxing game, but there's so many like fighting game mechanics in it. So here, let me let me let me uh, just break the ice here. It plays like shit. <laughs> it's an interesting, very good looking game, but when you yeah. play it, it just it feels like a fucking mess. <laughs> like it feels like you're slipping on ice with a controller and the characters just eventually die. It's got a unique like four way dodging system where you can dodge back down left and right and like avoid stuff. And I, I swear we have one of the craziest clips uh, from your video games of us just <laughs> I swear to God mashing and Kenny is fighting Steve and I think one of them activates their instinct rumble mode and I'm not even kidding you I think Kenny just was spinning the stick he dodges everything <laughs> and like cue the guile music I'm like what the fuck this is he, he's guessing right one out of four like ten times in a row this is ridiculous. wait so you guys have like a secret underrated like moment 37 yeah like uh, he didn't win <laughs> granted he didn't because eventually his luck ran out and then he just got okay. slugged but That's he dodged funny. like eight times in a row I'm just and he was just like it was the nuttiest looking thing I've ever seen. Me and Simmons are like, what the fuck is going on? That's I've never heard of this. Of, of all the great yo video game moments, this is this is new to me. I don't remember if the second Ready to Rumble played any better. I want to assume it did. I think it. I think it's a little bit speedier, and it has mm. uh, it has Michael Jackson and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton, so it's better. It was made in the '90s, folks. Can you tell that? You know. I, have you played the third Ready to Rumble? Didn't know that existed. Yeah, no one did. Um, Ready <laughs> no to Rumble Revolution on the Wii, which changed everything so that it's a uh, celebrity mocking game. All oh. the characters are like celebrity, like 
parallels. Like there's, I think you can play as Brad Pitt's character from Snatch, stuff like that. But it's, but they don't have the rights to the character, but they're all like, it, like you remember you, you just said Hillary Clinton and Michael Jackson. It was like, let's do a whole game like that. Yeah. But we don't want to pay for those people, so we'll just have versions of them. So, so uh, you're telling very me sad. It's, it's a cheaper version of Celebrity Deathmatch from the Xbox. Yes. Well, you brought it up, Celebrity <laughs> Deathmatch on the Xbox, which is I've had people tell me to play this on the worst fighting game forever, and I'm like, no, it's a it's a it's a wrestling game. But then I was like, wait, is it? I can't remember how it played. I remember it was terrible. See, but... here's the thing. I played it for like an hour and i can't tell you i don't i forgot everything it's all gone <laughs> even you know it's you know it's a real like in between thing uh, i'm not sure you played these but the back backyard wrestling games despite them saying wrestling in it like one or two of them are like that's a fucking fighting game because you move so fast and you do have free movement around like a little arena but it's it plays much more like a fighting game because it's just about strikes and doing special moves and environmental interaction, like every object, kind of like Def Jam Fight for New York with the the backgrounds and stuff. Yeah. But every object is a thing that you can do, and there's weapons everywhere. I think I can't remember if that was the first one or the second one, but they're both like, guess what? Oh, it's because it's from the makers of Mortal Kombat, Shaolin Monks, mm. and All Stars. So that was one where I, I one of them played pretty well. I think it was the second one that played better, but. Uh, Despite it saying wrestling in the title, like I was like, this is this is not a wrestling game because I think they knew. And even like Thrill Kill and um, what's the other one that uh, the Thrill Kill devs made afterwards? The oh Shaolin Monk or uh, 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 Wu Tang. Wu Tang. Wu Tang. It's been a long time since I played that. Do you? Don't you guys play that every so often no, we, on your well, video the, games? The last time I played it, it's just Thrill Kill. Oh, like okay. it's yeah. the same game. It's the same engine. It's like similar moves even for a lot of characters. So. Yeah, it th it Thrill Kill is like an arena brawler in many mm -hmm. ways. Like, I don't think you use the walls, but it's it's just like you just get all these attacks and crazy moves and grabs and stuff, and it, that's about it. And there's big, big-ass combos. Granted, th not a lot of people, you're not going to find a lot of combo videos for Thrill Kill, but characters get 10-hit <laughs> combos because that's what you did with, a, th with a, a 3D fighting game that came around around the Tekken era. Every yep. character needs 10 hitters. So you, you have that, and you can chain 10 hitters into 10 hitters from what I can remember. I think, sh I think Wu Tang has like the same shit. And if you don't play it on that Wu Tang controller, then what the hell are you doing? <laughs> uh, 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 about that. All right, man, I'm going to say it. Celebrity Deathmatch is, is a fighting game. Okay, what is your evidence, sir, to this this controversial opinion? It, it's because the moves are very exaggerated, so they have like projectiles and spammy moves, kind of like how WWF, uh, the arcade game, has. And there's no pin. There's like when you when you pretty much take the life bar, it goes into kill, which is the fatality, <laughs> right? And they do right. a fatality at the end, and then the match is over. So it's for the most part like. A fighting game because i just literally just saw i'm watching it I'm, i just saw justin timberlake do his kill move his his finisher and pretty much the, the the opponent is laying on the floor and he calls out the other members of in sync and each of them rip a body part yo apart. so like that is content right there for 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 what for what happened for sure <laughs> I uh, you you can play that on your channel too i don't want to i don't want to touch it actually it, um, it looks so good it looks so sick <laughs> I, I since you uh, you bring it up a little bit, anything that we've talked about today because you've mentioned once or twice like oh this looks cool. Is there anything that's like struck your fancy a little bit to like possibly take up to to start labbing or, or was, oh crap I was just thinking about it. There there was one where I was like yeah I should try that. I should give that that game a shot. And I don't I I'm gonna have to watch this episode again. <laughs> so for me it was uh, best bout boxing. Best bout. Best bout the, boxing. The SNK looking the SNK look like one. That one looks super sick. The Hajime no Ippo anime boxing. This is great content. Oh, <laughs> I I need to play WWE All Star. Yeah, again, oh, to check out the, the, the DLC WWF characters. All Star, like which whatever the heck no, it was. I, I think it's WWE because this is uh, way after the WWF okay. uh, saga. saga. I, I need to play yeah, that game I again. I need, I need to figure out a way to like, how do we play it online? Can we get it on like RPCS3 and get it running on Parsec or something and get four people to just beat the shit out of each other? Or we got to do yo video games with it. It made me realize that that game's like really special 
Uh, and just because it's like, let's take a wrestling game and give it hugely bombastic moves. Like when you when you suplex a bitch, You're they're so gonna crazy. jump into the fucking air thirty feet. There's gonna be all these like hit sparks everywhere, explosions that happen and stuff. It, it's great. It's like yeah, let's take wrestling and dial it up to eleven. And guess what? Yep. That's what I that's what I like about Def Jam. Def Jam takes wrestling and dials it up to eleven. Or we're just going to like, yeah, spin a dude by his head on his top. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin a guy around and back break him, like you know, over my back while spinning him around my body, like it was crazy shit. I'm like, Jesus, man, how do they come up with this stuff? This is nuts. What's crazier is that, like, for Def Jam, like the insanity comes from like 80 percent of the time the um, blazing moves, right? Yes. Whereas, like, even the simple combo strings and all stars are nuts because. I, I think this is the only wrestling game where you do this, where you can just juggle guys in midair. There's ground bounces. With like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ground bounce until like juggle, and then there's like, a, you have like, not an air throw, but like a, a ground-based grab. Yes. Where you grab and then do a slam, and then there's other stuff that leads into, because you have your signature, like kind of special moves, and then you have your finishing move, and those chain together. Yeah. Like one has yellow sparks, one has red, and then there's just the defensive reversal options, which <laughs> for my money, the, the last time I looked at a Yo! Video Games video where you guys are doing that, and the screams of hype for the reversals were a bit higher pitched. You get a big bit bigger of a pop for the reversals because you can keep chaining the reversals over and over until I don't know, you get Slam Master. Yeah, or something. Like, that sounds very Slam Mastery because I forgot we did that. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just like because def, def, um sorry, defensive moves have like that blue aura around you. So when you've reverse there's like this little blue shadow on you and it looks yeah. it looks so up because you have to be really really good because i think the timing increases to be faster and faster to press the prompt but uh, i gotta play this it, game again I yeah. got <laughs> you're like so into it like i need to play I, it because it, it, it's also got like a great roster like it has it has yeah. a wwe roster in the same way that def jam has an incredible roster it just pulls like from classic wrestling legends like andre the giant is in it from what i remember you can play yeah. as like 80s hulk hogan you can play yep. as uh you can play as ultimate warrior like it, it feels but, like it's got like the super classic roster in it and then it you does, have a yeah. bunch of you have a bunch of the current new guys at the time. This is yeah. circa what twenty eleven. Rock is in it. Yeah, the Rock is yeah, in the, it. Yeah, the Rock is in it. But like, you'll have a lot of characters that are no longer with the company, but they were hot at the time. And the only thing about that game, and, and for anyone that hasn't played it before and, and ever wants to check it out, is like its single player content is like not that great. Um, maybe to a fighting game in general, it's pretty good if you're used to wrestling games. Like it's, it's not great. poor. Like you have like an arcade ladder essentially, and you basically have a choice of fighting like three or four characters and the little story vignettes are about them. And then you have these make, not make believe matches, but dream matches where they make like a promo package of, oh, Austin, Stone Cold, Steve, uh, Steve Austin would hate uh, CM Punk. They never met, but I bet you they hate each other and they like make it oh. seem like the old versus the new and it's like not anything yeah. like that's not a thing that happened. And just making a dream match doesn't mean anything when they're Do, the real people never met. Do you remember if it even had create a character? It did, but it was it was whack pretty I mean, limited yeah. i remember i remember like I, I think i remember it but i don't know because and that's like the number one defining staple of like a wrestling game can you make characters right that's like what everybody expects and if that mode is lacking then it's gonna it's essentially gonna be something that not everybody loves yeah i, I don't think it, it had the same love that it that normal wwe games get because the normal wwe games like the they're like they're they're create a character was so much more i would say polish so i think the all-star one is kind of more of just like we just want to just have these characters that you guys know just do some exaggerated shit and then you guys love it yeah so if i recall this this is what the deal was the the actual like uh visuals of your character like they're pretty robust you can do a lot of weird and crazy things but the making of your character their moves and stuff was kind of limited more in the sense that it was more like pick the type of character you want. You want to be the, the heavyweight, the grappler or, or whatever, or the yeah. striker. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, assign your moves and that's it. Like there was like, you couldn't really 
do uh, much outside of that. Like you couldn't yeah. really craft the character's personality and like move by move. That's my memory. I might be wrong on that, but I remember the actual gameplay component of building the character the way you want them to play is they wound up feeling a little cookie cutter because the game kind of took more archetypes and how a character plays. Like you couldn't be a super heavyweight and you'd lock yourself out of like a lot of moves. Because you couldn't assign them to them yeah. or something. And you couldn't limiting. do cruiserweight that's, stuff. That's just like no fun allowed kind of shit, you know? Yeah. A little bit. Like, I understand why they did it. Because that game was, like, so new. Like, they built it from the ground up. wasn't based on an old engine. wasn't based on the other games. So, like, I get... That's why I was so pissed that, like, WWE or two K uh, THQ at the time uh, didn't continue with that. Because a sequel would have been so good. Yeah. Like, just built off, off what they had learned there. And... And done that. There, there's so, another one we actually forgot about, though. Another WWF game. But sorry, Max, you're about to say something. Oh no, I was I was gonna pose like a final question to you guys since we're getting close. But go, okay. go ahead because we need to we need to fit in as many as we can before the final question. Hey, okay. Uh, is another WWF game was the follow up that was made by a different team to um, WrestleMania, the arcade game that was WWF in your house on oh, the PlayStation and Saturn, yeah. and that even went full, like much harder where all characters now had fatalities yeah only undertaker i think had a fatality in the arcade version of the first one so i'm assuming and it's everyone, a midway game it, it's it no it's not weird acclaim acclaim published it and some other developer outside of midway like acclaim had the rights weird. to publish these but they had another development and, and like the game looks terrible visually like the sprites are much much smaller they're all washed out but every wrestler has their own themed stage so when you're Bret Hart, you're stuck in his dad's old stinky dungeon in Calgary, <laughs> or or like if you're in Shawn Michaels, you're in the Shawn Michaels hotel. If you're the in the, the the Undertaker, you're in a graveyard. That type of shit. Like I love that stuff. Um, and the other one, of course, we have to mention, but specifically since uh, Capcom have it in the uh, Capcom Arcade Stadium too. Saturday Night Slam Masters. Yeah, the first one. No, that's a wrestling game. That's a wrestling the game. The second one, Ring of Destruction, is a fighting game. Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, and I barely played them. Like I, I think I played them on your video games for like a few minutes and a few a few rounds. And I've never really understood how they play, but everyone says Slam Masters 2 is like really good. And there's some very classic characters that come from that game too. So the like crazy part, super yeah, combos. Yeah. yeah, the crazy part of Ring of Destruction is that like there's actual like dash cancels and infinites and everything like that. It doesn't play as a wrestling game compared to Slam Master. And, it's um, way faster too. Yeah, and Muscle Bomber Duo, which is kind of very similar to, to Slam Masters 1. Uh, really, really, uh, one last quick question of both of you before Max uh, Ma Max uh, finishes us off. That's the what, wording. Jeez. Um, uh, what is the better name? Saturday Night Slam Masters or Muscle Bomber The Body Explosion? The first uh, one's so much better, Matt. Yeah, the <laughs> first one, Slam Master, just sounds better. Uh, but I, I'm I'm actually curious about before before Max poses the question, if this game is a fighting game because okay. this game was featured in many FGC tournaments. Um, it had a lot of prize pool because uh, the developers put a lot of money into it. Mario dive Kart kick. DS. No, but close. But Dive Kick. Yeah, that's true. What about Dive Kick? How do you guys feel about Dive Kick as a fighting game? <laughs> dive Kick is a fighting game, but fast. Like it just it's a Street Fighter fast. Like it's that's footsie, all it is. It's, a, it's literally footsie the game though. It's footsies with yeah. dive kicks, pretty much. It's so footsie it's with, just, with more mobility and shit. Yeah, because I feel like it, at that point it's just kind of more of like a strategy. I mean, it's a it's gimmick. chess. It's like, chess. It's it's a gimmick, but it's it, like it, you have to think of it from the the Keats perspective. Right, yeah. like uh, you just—if you get hit by the dive kick in the actual fighting game, you're pretty much fucking dead. <laughs> like, and what happens after, like, leads to your death. So yeah. fuck the rest of it. Just do the one thing. Just hit the so, dive kick, and that's it. This is this, this is fast. What you're saying is that it cuts out the middleman of like yeah. combos and things. <laughs> they, yeah. the, crazy, the crazy part is it has kind of like a lot of different cool other other cool elements because they have gems. Kind of like I don't know if they took that from Street Fighter Cross Tekken or it was like a play. I, I think there's was a gems, good choice. Right? It was, it was right? taken as a joke. <laughs> okay, it was taken <laughs> as a joke with the gems, and then also it kind of have like that uh that the um, 
the vampire savior uh, effect where things carry over where uh, yeah. let's say like if you get headshot um, you actually move like super slow yeah, slower and you at can't the start do anything of the next like round. that I forgot about that so it it, and it was crazy because this was a very popular game in lots of fighting game tournaments. I mean, it's, it's, it, a it's a gimmick. Game. It, it is. It's a gimmick fighting game. Yeah, I think but, you, you have to have that in parenthesis. Or but something. like all <laughs> fighting games have gimmicks. Like it's it's done with a very joking, ton in cheek way of just yeah, let's just cut out all that bullshit and yeah. just get to the one thing because that's that's what street. This is the, the game was made as a response to Street Fighter Four. Because yeah. the whole thing of Street Fighter mm-hmm. 4 was that it was Vortex as fuck. And yeah. a lot of the Vortex was actually unblockable, we learned later on, that you just yep. couldn't even block it. So if you got hit once, you were essentially dead. So that was, it was a direct response to that, where it's like, yeah, we'll just cut out all the extra shit. Just <laughs> bopped in the head and all you We'll save now. you time. We'll, we'll save, save you time. You time. <laughs> All right. So, what is what is uh, is this a final game you want to ask about? Yeah, I think I think this is a final game, final answer, uh, multi million dollar question here. Because if if we're doing uh, an episode about not fighting games, I feel like a lot of people would be expecting us to directly uh, talk about this. Why isn't Smash Brothers a fighting game? Uh, We 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 touched on this a little bit though, right? But as far as it being a two D platformer game that is now accepted. That is now grown to the part where everybody loves it. Why wasn't Smash considered a fighting game in the early 2000s, much less even okay. to the late 2000s when other fighting games that were like Virtual On or Arena Fighters might have been? And this is where like what is actually considered a fighting game, the ethics of the situation is into consideration. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying now. Um, I think it's because smash was like seen as its own thing for so long because like no one else was even touching it in terms of popularity and blah 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 so when that bleed over actually happened with other platform fighters getting you know rivals of aether brawlhalla and there's like there's a million now multiverses like now it's just such an established genre and the other ones that tried to like sneak in there like um playstation all-stars it was just like like it was still too early yeah. and you needed all these other games to hit. And now it's like more accepted just because I think in the two thousands smash was just by itself. Like no one else was, it, it was like street fighter two. There are lots of other fighting games that people gravitated towards and got sure. almost as popular as street fighter, but for smash, just nothing ever hit quite. And like PlayStation all-stars looked like it was going to be it, but it just didn't like, and even then it sold really well. It's just for whatever reason, Sony was like, nah, fuck this and just cut its, cut its legs off for whatever reason. The, the, the main hero from legend of dragoon was going to be a DLC character and they cut that shit off. Like that'd have been crazy. Delete yeah. cloud put in dart. That's what I want. So, so Justin, yeah. from, from your perspective, as far as somebody that really frequented the arcade and the, the competitive scene and what were the reasons? I'm curious if your reasons or of what you heard of why Smash isn't a fighting game echo the same stuff that I kind of heard throughout like the much, early 2000s. Yeah, I have a much more interesting uh, reason why Smash was not accepted like in the FGC okay. back in the day. It's because like uh, all the tournament organizers back in the day were grown up as arcade players. And because they were arcade players, uh, Smash was never an arcade game. It was it sure. never was shown yes. in arcade. So a lot of times the TO, since they are like OGs uh, from the scenes, they're stuck with what they know. They stuck with what uh, people, what their players played and nobody played Smash Butters um, from the arcade scene. It was and new also, and different. Yep. And also another reason why is because MLG came in um, in like 2005 and took Smash, took Smash Melee as their own circuit game. Uh, so from there, it's like uh. the, the player base completely separated from left and right. And then we just never engaged with each other because because MLG really never ran uh, traditional fighting games. Uh, they did. I, back think in next the day. To, I think next to Smash, they ran DOA three or four. Yeah, even and even and then, that DOA it. DOA was also kind of like it was never really part of the arcade genre as well too. And yeah. like even it though even it was, the, yeah. but it, yeah, it, it was. Te- yeah, it, there wasn't a lot of DOA cabs, so it technically yeah. wasn't. It didn't get the, the amount of respect that other games like Tekken or Virtual Fighter did. Yeah, and and, al- and also DOA three and four, like they just even have arcade releases anymore anyway. Like yeah. the first two did, but like after that, like they're always console exclusive until yeah. I think DOA five had a random arcade release in Japan. It's though. uh, and also because DOA was also licensed uh for a direct TV show on 
G4TV called Championship Gaming Series. So the FGC was never able to kind of touch it because oh, also because yeah wow. yeah yeah because like anytime they let's say fgc ran a tournament for like smash brothers melee or like doa4 nobody would show up because they just wanted to stay with where the money is because mog was applying supplying all that money so when mog stopped running smash the smash scene died for a bit because there was technically no such thing as a to for the smash scene until they brought it up there on their own yeah. So that was pretty much from what I remember growing up on why like FGC and Smash never really got along in the beginning. I think that's the more accurate version of it than, than my theory. <laughs> that's that that that's actually really interesting. I didn't know that there was like a like a hard split for like a reason other than someone just looking at a Nintendo game going that's for babies. That, like, that's that, for for a casual perspective, that's a big one, right? Yeah. Mm. The the overall perspective of what the game is, that's not a hardcore fighting game. And you're still gonna hear this like ad nauseum nowadays for a lot of games. Like, is this a hardcore fighting game? And you ask that person, you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about when you say that. Like, but it's it's like somebody that is like a rando that comes in and asks, is this game balanced? And then yeah. immediately, if somebody's asking, is this game balanced? I know you have no idea what fighting games are. <laughs> you know, like it's, a, it's a huge tell if, you, if you're asking, is this game balanced? So in, in the same way, like the, the casual perspective is a big deal. But here's the thing, because Smash has now transcended the traditional fighting game. It's more popular than any other fighting game there is, at least from a competitive standpoint. More popular than Street Fighter ever has been. More popular than any individual Tekken tournament or anything like that. Smash has now eclipsed all of it so i and i think that is just the the awareness of it like over time smash has grown it's gotten bigger its competitive scene got bigger it transcended what it eventually what it what it was at the start and now it's grown to something that is accepted and is wildly the fighting game right smash brothers ultimate 90 plus characters 600,000 stages or over 3 billion music tracks is ultimately the greatest fighting game of all time kind of thing with the shittiest netcode so <laughs> yes the the overall perspective of what makes a fighting game like a fighting game has changed over time is what i'm trying to say where games like def jam can be fighting games because people took it seriously people love the game mm. and if people love the game enough yeah it's, it's 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 considered a fighting game people are playing it competitively with each other to this day and taking it super seriously. And I think that's what constitutes a fighting game now, right? So where if enough people are really into this thing and they grow a scene in their community, that is what makes a fighting game a fighting game. So just to generalize, it's like if if a community didn't form around Smash, it would just stay as Smash. Casual baby that, game. Yeah, casual that, baby game. Huh? That Nintendo mascot game where you punch each other a little bit and like that's kind of it. But because a community just basically formed around it, a, it, a fighting game it was made into a fighting game like smash brothers melee is considered to be one of the all-time classic fighting games next to like marvel versus capcom 2 super turbo and third strike right of like the old the old late 90s early 2000s melee is one of those games that is still played to this day that people grind the sure. hell out right and that's because the community started there it began with that game specifically and i feel like not even smash 64 i feel like people retroactively went back to smash 64 after melee yeah because it was like yeah. yeah like well there's a lot of crazy stuff in this game what could you do in the old game type of thing and that happened to a lot of other fighting games around the same time frame as well so it, it grew the community and because people were taking it seriously it was it was it was the ethics of the situation had changed it was considered like a fighting game it was considered this hardcore thing that only for hardcore people do you get into and that's essentially what melee is now melee is to what we thought third strike was in the early yeah. 2000s it's really difficult crazy hard to get into fighting game that's now smash brothers melee for around that time frame for a shit ton of people so what you're saying is, is that urban champion walked so that smash brothers could run is what you're saying yes sure. <laughs> we are waiting for the dark souls of fighting games let us have it we're ready <laughs> soul edge has nothing on a lightsaber like i'm sorry james earl jones comes back no, no. oh no <laughs> oh <laughs> I don't think kids trade games yeah. anymore. I need that sense of accomplishment and it wasn't there. And I think that that was a major flaw. The way they engineer these is just phenomenal. As much as you're into like the comics, I was very into the toys. So I was on like the message board all yeah. the time. Yeah.